today's world's greatest gambling scams, the most skillful scammers, and the incredible moves that have taken millions from casinos worldwide. Coming up, the unbelievable dice controllers who take revenge on the casinos by throwing winning numbers every time. When we go into the casino, we want to hit them, we want to take their money, we want to do to them what they've done to all the other players. And more often than not, we do just that. And the man who dominated America's craps tables by mastering the art of throwing dice to order. The next day I went down to the casino. When I got the dice, I rolled for 15 minutes. That was the start of everything. Welcome back to the world's greatest gambling scams. Today's show reveals the most skillful moves to ever hit the gambling world. Still to come, the incredible craps player who makes big money by throwing all the winning numbers. He can actually call out the numbers that he's going to hit. I have never seen any dice controller ever be able to do that. Sherry brought glamour and speed to her scamming. But next, in our roundup of the most skillful scammers, a man who discovered the ultimate advantage. A technique that the casinos don't try to stop because they believe it's impossible. In 1991, one man took the game of craps to a whole new level by mastering a dice throwing technique that no one least of all the casinos, believed possible. He's known as the Dominator, and his amazing skill has made him very wealthy. All through my life I've always been a gambler, either in my businesses or just playing games. But I always knew that I was never going to put hard-earned money on the line unless I knew how to beat the game. Dominator is the greatest dice controller in the world today. And when he gets in a zone, sometimes he can actually call out the numbers that he's going to hit. I have never seen any dice controller ever be able to do that. In the early 80s, software engineer Dominic Larigio was a regular on the Atlantic City casino scene. For years, Dom concentrated on blackjack until something made him look up. I saw people cheering for someone who was just throwing the dice. Cheering for him, giving him high fives. It was just a tremendous feeling that, that came over me. And I said, boy, I want to learn this game. And I think that this is, would be the next game that I could learn how to beat if I took enough time. Craps works on a very basic set of rules. Because the outcome relies on the throw of a pair of dice, winning should be all down to luck. The game of craps is really quite a simple game. When you first get the dice, if you throw a 7 or 11, you win. If you throw a 2, 3, 12, you lose. If you throw any other number, such as a 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10, that becomes your point number. And then the object of the game is to try to repeat that number to become a winner. A unique thing about craps is that the customer gets to determine the outcome. They don't let the customer spin the ball on a roulette wheel. They don't let the customer deal the cards at blackjack. But in craps, the customer gets to pick up the dice. The customer gets to throw those dice down the table. And those results that are generated by the customer are used to decide bets on the table. Dominic realized that being able to pick up the dice would give him a surefire way of making lots of money. But so few people have ever mastered the technique of dice controlling that most casinos refuse to believe it's even possible. The casino's views on dice controlling is that it doesn't work. And I'm glad that that is their view, that it doesn't work. There are a lot of people out there that try to control the dice and just can't. Uh, and so the casinos look at it and say, well, you know what, if that's what they want to do, we know it can't work, just let them do it. Rather than try to prove the casinos wrong, Dominic decided to turn their doubts to his advantage. I went through some pretty extensive research 
when I decided to learn this game of craps and learn this controlled throw. I began to practice myself. I built myself a little practice table, a little practice rig, I call it, to be able to throw dice into and be able to start looking at the different ways of gripping, of setting the dice. I went to a tremendous amount of casinos. I'd walk up to the table and just put some money down on the table so that I could feel the felt. And then I went back home and on my practice rig, I would try to put the same type of feel to that practice rig that I felt on the table. I had to make my environment in my practice exactly like my environment was going to be in a casino for me to beat them. Dominic spent three hours a day for six months perfecting his dice throwing technique before he felt ready to set foot in a casino. When he did, the outcome was a shock. First time I ever walked up to a table after practicing for six months, I was nervous as all heck. And the first time I threw the dice, I was a loser. Despite his disappointment, Dominic was determined that six months of his life weren't going to go to waste. The next day I went down to the casino. When I got the dice, I rolled for 15 minutes. That was the start of everything. I knew that I could do this. I knew that I could beat this game. His persistence paid off and the Dominator was born. I was at a crap table shooting with one of my friends and at the end of the roll, and it was a pretty long roll, he just called me Dominator. People just started calling me Dominator, Dominator, because I seem to be able to dominate these tables when I'm at them. And the Dominator did indeed dominate the world of craps. But after 11 years of playing on his own and winning hundreds of thousands of dollars, unbelievably he met someone who would take his winnings up yet another level. Stay with us to find out how the Dominator managed to raise the stakes in his dice throwing game and rake in even more money. But first, continuing the story of the world's most skillful dice thrower and the chance meeting that took his game to an even higher level. In 1991, Dominic Lurigio, otherwise known as the Dominator, mastered a dice throwing technique that no one, least of all the casinos, thought possible. By learning to control the dice and throw winning numbers to order, he turned the game of craps into a big buck bonanza. The Dominator continued to win big money across the states, his unique talent going unnoticed by the doubting casinos for 11 years. But then, he started to hear about another high roller. Well, I got involved in casino gambling in a, in a unique way. I was an actor and I was researching a role about a gambler who played craps and I didn't know anything about the game. So I went to Atlantic City to learn the game. And as soon as I walked into a casino, I was hooked. A year later, I sold my share of my theater company and went into the gambling full time. Frank Scabletti had practiced his dice throwing until it became a science. The way to control the dice is threefold. Number one, you have to set the dice with the numbers that you want to hit. You have to grip the dice with your hand in a way that makes the dice even. And the third, and a very serious element, is how you throw the dice. You want to release the dice in a very soft way so that they hit the felt, lose their energy, and die. It was inevitable that the two would eventually meet. I met the Dominator at Treasure Island in 2002. I was researching a book called The Craps Underground and I wanted to meet the best dice controllers in the world. He was there. I interviewed him for about 15 minutes and I finally said to him, I want to see how good you are, let's go to the tables. I said to myself, no problem, let's go, I'm going to show this guy what I have. But on the other side of the coin, I wanted to see what he had. He had just as much, if not more, than I did and I knew that I found a fella there that was not only a kindred spirit, but somebody who understood how to play this game the way I wanted to play this game. And I could learn even more by just being around him. Frank and Dominic joined forces and began to play together as a dice controlling team. It was the start of a phenomenally successful gambling partnership. 
Dom and I decided to name our team Golden Touch because it's the golden touch that we want when we shoot the dice in order to make the money. And indeed, more nights than not, we do have the golden touch. The dice controllers were now unstoppable. They began to work their way across America, making a significant hole in the casino's profits. When Dom and I are playing as a team, we pool our bankroll. We, he'll give 10,000, I'll give 10,000, that'll be our stake for a given session of play. Uh, we split the money equally 50-50. We rarely play at different tables. We tend to play at the same table in order to double our chances to win. But when we go into the casino, we want to hit them, we want to take their money, we want to do to them what they've done to all the other players. And more often than not, we do just that. Inevitably, the team's ability to win to order has attracted unwanted attention over the years. Casinos don't really frown upon dice control. What casinos do is they frown upon winners. And it doesn't matter what game you're playing, if you have skills to where you are uh, a winner in the long run, the casinos don't like it. Winning at the casino is a double-edged sword. The way offering a buffet for all you can eat is a double-edged sword for a restaurant. You may get some big eaters coming in there who are going to eat a lot more than the buffet costs. Dominator and I are big eaters. Because dice controlling isn't illegal, the casinos can't stop them playing. Instead, many use distraction techniques in a bid to break the player's concentration. The casino's personnel's job is to try to make as much money for the casino as they possibly can. And when someone comes in who is taking money from them with a long roll at the craps table, their job is to try to make this roll stop. I've had stick people hit me on the hand, I've had stick people lean into me, I've had boxmen say some very nasty things to me at the table to try to rile me. Despite the casino's tactics, Dominic and Frank continue to play and continue to win. In the three years they've been playing together, the dice controllers have made an estimated one million dollars, the equivalent of almost 600,000 pounds.